What is up, everybody? So, uh, that clankety-clank that you hear, that's not my new project. But it is a diesel wagon. But I did get a new project, and it's actually really cool. I actually learned on one of these when I was eight years old and trying to learn how to ride. And, uh, I found this one on Marketplace. It has not ran in 26 years. And now I own it uh, after some negotiations and so I'm going to show it to you. It's uh, pretty cool if you like these old vintage stuff. So this is a 1971 Yamaha DT250 Enduro. And I was pretty adamant about getting this because A, it's pretty dang clean for uh, how old it is, and B, the price was something I probably could not pass up. It's street legal, came with in a crazy amount of extras, and uh, a title. It's kind of hard these days to find these with a the title. So it's a 250cc two-stroke, pretty familiar with these. I learned on a 175 actually, but uh, she only has 6,900 miles, so not bad for, what, 50 years old, something like that? <coughs> I do not know if it runs. Um, the guy that I bought it from, uh, it was kind of like an estate sale sort of thing. He just wanted to just clean out a garage. But the promising factor of this is it kicks over and it has a ton of compression. So these old Yamahas are uh, they are pretty bulletproof, to be honest. They, they're stout. I, like I said, I learned to ride on one. They're super easy to work on. This one's a 250. I've never actually owned a 250 before. I had a 175 and uh, a, three, a DT360, no, RT360, uh, 73. So I've never owned a 250. I'm actually really excited. But the goal uh, today, at least tonight, is I'm gonna try to get it running. There's no fluids in it. So it's, a, it's like rolling the dice. I bought this thing not running. And my goal is to hopefully get it running in the next uh, few hours. So let's get to it, shall we? I'm gonna get, I gotta get it home first. So, <clears throat> I just arrived with the uh, Enduro, and uh, we're going to unload it. I'm going to kind of go through everything, do a double check real quick, add gas, clean out the carb real quick, double check the engine as far as if the oil injection and whatnot was removed, and just kind of go over everything before trying to start it. So, the goal is to have it running today. Will that happen? I don't know. Because like I said, this has been sitting since 1990 or 91 is what the guy that I bought it from said. But it's all there. It's in really good condition for the year. <clears throat> Most of these are kind of neglected or beat up or butchered as I call it, or they're just not original. This thing's 100% original. It's kind of crazy. It even has the original toolkit. So I have a lot of faith in it. Still though, doesn't mean that it's going to start. But I love these old uh, Enduros because A, they're relatively very simple to work on and uh, they're just robust looking. I mean, look at the thing. It's just, it says, I am here to send you to the ER or throw some dirt or maybe both. I like that. But let's get unloaded. Let's try to get it running. Alright, so if you're wondering what some details are about this, this is a 1971 Yamaha DT250. 
Now this particular chassis design came out in, I believe, 1968. Uh, they had a 125, a 175, which I learned on, and then the 250, a 360, which was the RT360, that was the big boy. I actually had one of those too, and I regret selling that. But I think the best of the best, in my opinion, or the most, not sought after, but I think the best all around bike is the 250 because it had that bottom end power that you needed. It had the highway top speed that you wanted. Not that these are really rated for highway, but it was just an all around bike and it still had the weight of a 175, 125. At least it felt that way. So this thing, like I said, I got really lucky because it's all original. That's the factory paint. Um, wheels and tires are in great shape. It's got drum brakes, which is hilarious. You gotta think about how this thing's nearly 50 some years old. It's a two stroke engine and I love two strokes because A, they're super easy to work on and the two strokes of this era made pretty darn good power in comparison to the four strokes of this era. When two strokes came out, the Japanese released the two strokes well, I shouldn't say the Japanese released it. They, the two strokes have been around for a while, but when Japan came out with their two stroke variant of the dirt bike or the enduro, it was impressive. It was ridiculously fast. In fact, excuse my mess because I'm organizing my shop, but I'll show you. I know. Whoa. That is a 1970R5A two stroke twin cylinder 350. YZ465 and a 73 SC500. This thing was one of the fastest street bikes at the time in the CC class. It's a 350cc. It makes the power of like a 500 or a 600. It's, it's so fast. Uh, it's a two stroke. So back to these. I love these because they are so simple to work on. Your carburetor, it's just a, bit, a regular style float bowl. Uh, you got a float in there with two jets, your idle and your main. Here's your idle adjustment. It's got a reserve, a main, you gotta turn your gas on. And then you're probably wondering why is there two spark plugs? Well, they did this because if you're in the middle of nowhere and you were to a foul one plug, you have the option of putting, swapping your um, ignition over to the other's plug. It's kind of a cool feature. Now. This tank right here is where you would keep the oil. It's a two stroke. So that's what separates these from four stroke. Obviously there's other characteristics like firing order and no valves, but these don't have their own lubricating system like a four stroke does where you have an oil pan and it pumps oil throughout the whole valve train. This oil is injected into the engine or vice versa the carburetor if you were to run premix and then it gets inducted into the engine, lubricates from the bottom of the crank area, and then into the actual cylinder head and escapes out the exhaust. Hence why two strokes smoke and four strokes don't, unless it's got bad valves or other problems. Two strokes rely on oiling to lubricate it. So you can either premix it or run the oil injection system. You'll have half people say, get rid of the oil injection system, it's dangerous, you could seize up your engine, run premix. And then you'll have other people say they love their oil injection system. I personally, if the factory came out with it, I'm gonna run it. And auto or Yamaha's um, auto lube system or oil injection system is very reliable. I have it on my R5. I've never had issues with it. And yeah, I guess you could run premix and completely eliminate that. But then I don't know. <clears throat> I like having more. You can just add oil. It does it automatically for you. So we're gonna make sure that's clean. We're gonna clean out the carburetor. Um, I'm going to clean out the, uh, this has its own self-sealed drive line, meaning that it's a five-speed transmission and it's self-contained oiling system. You just run regular 1030, nothing fancy, no synthetics or any of that. And we're going to try to get this running. But these are just really cool. I just, I want to give you a little tour of this thing. It's got the old knobbies cargo carrier. The seat's in incredible shape. Um, like I said, the last time this thing was ran was in 1990. 6,968 original miles. But what's nice is a good sign is <clears throat> none of the cables are seized up. This is the slide on the float isn't seized. Clutch is a little stiff, but the thing's been sitting 26 years, 27 years. So, all right, let's get it running or let's at least try. Otto, what do you think the probability that we get this running today? 
I need some statistics from you because you're the best at crunching numbers or the best at crunching milk bones. Yeah, that's what I thought. If you are on the market <clears throat> for a vintage Enduro, there's three things that I always say that make it kind of a must have if you're looking at buying one. I think they're all great. Honda, absolute um, bomb of a bike manufacturer, super reliable, super reliable. Sorry, my English is terrible today. And Kawasaki, they had their F7 175, the 250, great bike. Suzuki had an awesome lineage of bikes. So I don't think you can really go wrong. I'm a diehard Yamaha fan. I always have been. But there's three things that you want to look for. If you are buying a bike that's not running, the first thing that you want to make sure that it has, and you can simply find out, is compression. If this doesn't have much resistance and you don't hear a thunk thunk as far as the piston going up and down, or if it is seized, walk away because it's just more issues to deal with. Compression is everything. Not that you can't rebuild it, but if it's one less <coughs> headache that you have to deal with, do that. So this obviously was a selling point for me because it had compression and it kicked over easily. Number two is check the tank and to see if gas has been sitting in this in the bike that you're looking at for a very long time because it leads to further problems. These tanks rust out if stuff such as liquid sits in them and then it's like the uh, tree effect. Everything that falls down then goes to the carburetor, plugs that up and then it goes into the engine and causes further issues. Make sure that the tank is clean and I'm not saying it has to be perfect but the biggest way to tell is if the gas cap has got a bunch of rust on it or even on the, the neck right here. This one actually looks really nice. So when I saw that, I'm like, okay, somebody put this away correctly. Number three, this is a tough one, but it's, I think, saves you a ton of hassle. Make sure it has a title. If you're wanting to ride one of these on the streets and a guy says, just bill a sale only, either lowball the heck out of him or make sure that it has a title because getting a title for these vintage bikes is kind of a pain in the butt. It's not impossible, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. You can go through loopholes such as titling in Vermont. Don't take my legal, legal advice of that, but that works. But if it has a title it's and it's, let's say, 400 bucks more than what the, the bike that without the title has, get the bike with the title because you can put plates on it and go rip around in the city legally. On top of the facts is if you're out riding dirt or on BLM land and this thing's licensed, the rangers won't harass you unless because if you're out riding and you don't have the registration sticker and you cross the road you're supposed to have rules are different in each state but for colorado there's sticklers with that stuff so having a titled bike with plates makes life so much better and those are my three tips if you're looking at an old enduro and just in general doesn't have to be perfect but things such as all the levers work or the bar make sure the forks are straight and you know common sense when buying a bike. If it looks sketchy or something's not right, work on the price. I picked this thing up for 800 bucks with a title and a bunch of extras. So it's a pretty smoking deal considering the fact that these are really going out the roof price-wise. And uh, I mean, 800 bucks is a steal. That is if it runs. We're gonna try to get it running. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's try to get it running. One eternity. All right, being a two-stroke requires two-stroke oil. I own a lot of two-strokes because, well, jet ski's a two-stroke, snow runner's a two-stroke, my paramotor's a two-stroke, all the dirt bikes back there are two-strokes, so I personally like Lucas two-cycle. You're gonna hear a million different opinions on what to run and what not to run, but I like Lucas. So here is the oil injection reservoir so we're gonna actually add oil and see if we have any oil come out from any orifices but the hose is still connected to the injection system so that is promising I'm sorry that is the wiring harness there it actually comes underneath there so and I'll probably just add a little two-stroke oil to the tank just to be safe because you know this thing hasn't ran in 26 years all right so we topped off the two-stroke oil um, I have drained the driveline oil, which lubricates the gear mechanisms for the transmission. And now we are going to add some fresh gear oil. Once again, you're going to hear a million opinions of what to run. <clears throat> I literally run standard 
1030 is what the factory recommended. Nothing fancy, no synthetic, and it'll measure how much you're actually supposed to have here, but you also have a dipstick to let you know. And it is dry, obviously, because I have just emptied it. So we're gonna add oil to that. Now, the best way to take the carb off is actually really simple. You have these two bolts, and um, your float bowl is for Phillips. Um, I've taken the carb off, nothing actually, I just rotated it and double checked everything. It actually looks very clean. So I'm gonna try running this currently without having to take off all the jets and whatnot. Um, I checked my thing and it's showing that gas is flowing into the carburetor, so that's a good sign as well. Um, and I'm just gonna add a little premix to the tank just to be safe, but I think we're ready to see if she's gonna start the magic moment. <laughs> Ow, that was a... We're gonna see how many kicks. Let's take a guess how many kicks it's gonna take to start. 26 years, or whatever, my math is probably wrong. 1990 uh, has been since this ran. And uh, see how many kicks it takes. It even starts. All right, let's see here. Gas on. Prime the. and four kicks has been sitting since 1990. I don't know what does. What do you think? Holy crap. Well, now the next test is how does it ride? It's alive, <laughs> it runs, and uh, I'm actually shocked how quick it is. It's considerably faster than my 175. I just can't believe how fast it started. Also, correct uh, correction, it's 31 years since this ran, not 26. Like I said, my math was terrible, but I'm just stoked that it fires and it runs and it's alive, like the bike's alive again, so. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and find another project to get running again. But I think I'm going to keep this one. <laughs>